Hello, my name is Vidhi and today I'll be teaching you the topic digestion of food which is the subtopic of the chapter digestion and absorption. Now digestion. Digestion basically means how the food is processed, how the food we intake is broken down into smaller pieces and then it is absorbed and then utilized for the activities that we do. Now digestion of food, the very first step, uh, step that occurs in the digestion is uh, in our mouth. Mouth. As we intake the food in our mouth, the digestion gets started. This is because in our mouth, the saliva is present and due to this saliva, the starch which is present in the food gets broken down, uh, gets digested up to 30%. I'll explain you, example, maltose which is a starch breaks down into It will break down into uh, polysaccharides by up to 30%. Whole of the digestion does not take place. Only 30% of the digestion takes place in the mouth. And then after the mouth, we proceed to after the mouth comes the esophagus in esophagus there is no such uh, uh, digestion or absorption taking place in esophagus there is just the passage of food from the mouth to the stomach and then after esophagus comes stomach in stomach there are Three types of cells. These are the first one is Brush border epithelium mucosa cells. Brush border epithelium mucosa cells. That is because these cells have a brush border kind of appearance, and the function, main function of these cells are to secrete mucus in the stomach. They secrete mucus and stomach the next type of cells are parietal cells Parietal cells or the auxentic cells. The main function of these cells is to secrete pepsinogen. These are the two types of cells that are present. First one is the brush border cells that secrete the mucus and second one is the parietal cells that secretes the pepsinogen. 
Now the third type of cells is which secretes HCL. We all know that in the stomach there is HCL present. The HCL helps uh, in maintaining the acidic medium and the pH of that HCL is 1.8. The third type of cell which comes is peptic or the chief cell. So these are the three types of cells. The first cell is the brush water epithelium cell that secretes the mucus. And the second type of cell is the parietal or the oxygenic cells that secretes the HCL. Along with the HCL, it secretes B12 absorbing factor. B12 is a vitamin that is required in our body. And to absorb that, there is a special type of factor which is required. And that is secreted by the parietal or the oxygenic cells. And the third type of cell which is present in the stomach is peptic or the chief cell and the role of the peptic or the chief cell is to secrete pepsinogen which is a pro-enzyme of pepsin. We'll see uh, how it works pepsinogen once we come to the small intestine. Now this was all about the stomach. Now after stomach comes the small intestine. And this uh, stomach and the food from the stomach gets into the small intestine with the help of a spincher and its name is pyloric spincher. Pyloric spincher. Now before the stomach, uh, now before the uh, food from the stomach moves into the small intestine, there are many uh, juices, many secretions that occur, uh, that takes place, uh, that that takes place uh, from the uh, pancreas, from the liver, uh, the bile from the liver and the gallbladder. They all get sent to the food and makes it uh, and make the food uh, basic in nature. In stomach, as you can see, HCl is present. Here the pH of the HCl is pH of the HCl is 1.8. It means it is very acidic. Very acidic. Now here the mucus cells secretes the mucus. And secrete the mucus. The main function of the mu mucus is to um, to provide a care a caring environment to the stomach so that the stomach does not uh, uh, get blisters because of the HCl present. You, we know that the HCl is very acidic in nature, and if the HCl touches the uh, walls of the stomach directly, so there can be chances of uh, stomach getting damaged. There can be blisters also. So for the protection of the stomach. The brush water epithelium cell secretes the mucus. These were the things that are associated with the stomach. Now let's move on to the next thing.
let me tell you a definition which is of succus entericus which is succus entericus the succus entericus is the combination of the uh, mucus which is secreted from the stomach and the cells uh, which are present in the small intestine which also secretes mucus but it is secreted by the uh, globulate cells the succus is is the combination of mucus from the stomach plus secretion of goblet cells which secretes so these both comprises of succus entericus that means the juices basically this is what succus entericus is and also in uh, uh, the small uh, uh, in infants there is a pro uh, pro enzyme which is renin this is the name of a pro enzyme which is present in the stomach it is present in stomach it is a pro enzyme which is present in the stomach of infants as you all know that infants are basically feeded on milk so that is why the renin pro enzyme is present because it helps in the digestion of milk now there are many now there are many enzymes and uh, pro enzymes that are present in the pancreatic juices let's see what are those pancreatic what are present in the juices of pancreas pancreatic let's see what are those there is trypsinogen then there is chymotrypsinogen then there is amylase lipases nucleases so these are some of the uh, pro uh, enzymes that are present in it uh, pancreatic juices trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen amylases lipases and nucleases and particularly they have a specific function uh to do in once they enter into the small intestine now let me discuss about the trypsinogen which is uh the pancreatic juices get mixed up in the small intestine the duodenum of the small intestine and in the mucus of small intestine
कि ट्रिप से न जाए विच इज दिशन ऑफ द पैनक्रैटिक जूसेस वंस इज एंटर्स इन टू दी स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन the it gets acted by the enterokinases which is present in the present in the mucus of small intestine and the trypsinogen it is present in pancreatic juice now when the trypsinogen comes in contact with the enterokinases which is which is present in the mucus mucus of the small intestine it becomes active entro it becomes active trypsin and now this acts upon other enzymes that are present in the pancreatic juices and also in the small intestine and then it uh, initiates the activation of the other enzymes so this initiates the activation of other enzymes this is the first step how the initiation of uh the digestion of the food um uh, basically occurs so after this i and let me tell you this was up to the trypsin this was the uh, role of the trypsin whatever how it gets converted into the active form now the, this was all about the pancreatic juices as you know that the bile is also mixed with uh, the food which is coming from the stomach uh, from the uh, hepatopancreatic duct so let me tell you about bile bile is basically a pigment it is a pigment that helps in the emulsion that helps in the emulsification of fat now we all know that there are um, certain things uh, so certain different uh, uh, enzymes that act upon only those things uh, for example there are only uh, different uh, there are only specified enzymes that act upon the carbohydrates there are only special type of nucleases that act upon uh, nucleoside um, that act upon the nucleic acid some enzymes act only upon the protein and then there is bile which is related to the emulsification of fats emulsification of fats means fat are basically present in a big uh, big large globules so what does bile do bile breaks down this fat this is a fat into small small pieces now let me tell you about the components that are present in the bile
component of bile now there are bile tubin belly burden then there is bile salt and then there are phospholipid that are present in the bile note that the thing which is different about bile is that there are no enzymes present in bile so these were the basic components and that is these are the pigments bile salt phospholipids are the components of the bile and what basically is different about bile from the other uh, juices other etc pancreatic secretions and all is that there are no enzymes present in bile